They're not vampires, though they're highly sensitive to blood. They're not krakens, but they lurk below the surface waiting for the right moment to strike. And they're not just a prop for B-list Hollywood movies. They're sharks, and they're as real as you and I. Welcome to Fierce's Shark Marathon, a collection of some of the most gruesome stories involving the most feared fish on our planet. After hearing these stories, you might want to think twice before swimming in the ocean. On June 8, 2023, Yuri Popov and his 23-year-old son Vladimir headed to the waterfront next to the Dream Beach Hotel at the Egyptian resort of Hurghada. The pair, originally from Russia, had moved to Egypt several months before. It's reported that Vladimir was born in the subarctic city of Arkhangelsk in Russia before moving to Moscow. During the war with Ukraine, he moved to Egypt, apparently to avoid conscription into the army. His family had bought a property in the city of Hrkata, where Vladimir was working remotely as an IT specialist. On this particular day, he and his family were visiting the beach to relax and enjoy the cool waters of the Red Sea. The beach was busy. The water was full of locals and tourists swimming and splashing about in the shallows. Vladimir joined them. While his father remained on the sand, he took a dip. People were sliding down slides, landing in the water with the splash as children shrieked with excitement. A ladder lowered others into the water. The Red Sea Resort was popular, and the beach and the sea were its main attractions. People felt safe there. It was a lifeguarded stretch of water, and the sea was calm. Not long after Vladimir entered the water, he heard shouts of concern. He looked around. Turning his head, he could see other swimmers heading for the beach. Holiday makers screamed at the young man. Then he saw it, the telltale dorsal fin of a shark breaking through the surface of the ocean. It was large, dark gray, slicing through the water like a knife through butter. It circled Vladimir, its circles getting smaller and smaller. He made a dash for it, but he had left it too late. While others managed to get to safety, Vladimir had been targeted by the shark. It had locked its eyes onto the youngster from deep below the surface. The Russian's fate was now sealed. He hadn't spotted it in time. He was too far from the shore. The shark made a beeline for the swimmer and grabbed him. He was seen thrashing around in the water. He spun around and around as the shark tightened its grip and began to drag him downwards underwater. Amongst the commotion, Vladimir's legs were seen kicking above the water as he fought back. He was flipped over by the shark, disoriented and bloodied. Vladimir was then released and bobbed back up to the surface. The thrashing stopped. For a few heart-stopping moments, there was stillness. Vladimir, who was clearly injured as seen from the red-stained water surrounding him, could be seen beginning to swim back toward the shore. Was he going to make it? Maybe the shark had taken one bite and realized this was not its usual prey. Nervously, Vladimir summoned all his strength and headed toward dry land, but he only made it a few strokes. The ominous and terrifying shadow of the shark could be seen turning around and heading back for him. It hadn't finished its attack. It hadn't made a mistake. It knew this prey was injured. It was getting weaker, and it now came in for the kill. Vladimir cried out to his father on the beach. Papa! Papa! A desperate plea for help as the shark swam toward him again. It latched onto him, its huge jaws closing around his torso, pulling him underwater once more. The sea bubbled and boiled. The shark had him firmly in its jaws and thrashed and thrashed, its body rising up and out of the water. Again and again it rolled, over and over, a commotion of tail and fins as it flapped wildly. By now, Vladimir was no longer visible. The shark pulled him under, never to be seen alive again. A lifeguard from a nearby hotel rushed to the man's aid. As soon as the attack began, he jumped into a speedboat, and the engine burst into life, motoring toward the action. But it was too late. There was nothing anybody could do. They arrived on the scene just seconds too late. The man's body had disappeared from sight. Although the attack will play out in people's minds over and over, each wondering if they could have done something, it only lasted a matter of seconds, about 20 seconds in total. It had been a ferocious and brutal attack. 
For Yuri to witness his son's death must have been devastating. Unable to help, unable to reach him, watching him take his last breath. Knowing that Vladimir was fighting for his life, knowing that he was desperately trying to get back to shore, but he was all alone out there, fighting a losing battle. It must have been absolutely heartbreaking, a traumatic thing to witness. Vladimir's girlfriend, Anastasia, was also said to be in the water at the time of the attack. Some said that Vladimir warned her to swim away, protecting her from the imminent attack. Another Russian lady, devastated and distraught from witnessing the attack, was comforted by others on the sand. It's not known whether she was related to the family or not. Eyewitnesses, clearly traumatized from the tragic death, reported seeing the shark taking chunks out of Vladimir's body for up to two hours after the attack, dragging his body underwater again and again. Authorities launched a search for the tiger shark. It had remained in the area and was easy to spot from the speedboats. They circled the large animal, trailing behind them fishing nets. When it was caught in the net, it was dragged ashore and up onto the beach. As it lay there, its fins and tail wrapped in rope, it was clubbed to death as it squirmed and gasped. Men with metal bars and wooden sticks beat the animal again and again on the head and snout, another brutal and unforgiving death. A crowd gathered around the shark's motionless body, its large mouth gaping wide open. It had been a tragic end for both man and beast. Local officials said they were going to conduct a post-mortem and an investigation on the shark to try to understand why this incident happened. So often with shark attacks, a shark will take one bite before realizing it had made a mistake and swims away. It is less common for them to come back again and again. Authorities banned anyone from entering the water on the beach and several others that were nearby. Almost 50 miles of coastline were closed to the public for the following three days. Swimming, snorkeling, and kayaking were prohibited until it was deemed safe again. Shark attacks in the Red Sea coastal resorts are considered rare. However, in 2022, there were two fatal attacks near Hergata City, where Vladimir was killed. The resorts are popular, especially with European tourists. They offer excellent swimming and diving opportunities. But when attacks like this happen, people doubt the safety of the waters. It will take time for the tourism industry to recover, but in time, people will forget until it happens again. White sharks, also known as great white sharks, are some of the most feared and awe-inspiring creatures in the world's oceans. These massive predators can grow up to 20 feet long and weigh over 5,000 pounds. With razor-sharp teeth and incredible speed that make them the apex predator of the seas. But what makes white sharks truly fascinating is their hunting behavior. With a keen sense of smell and electroreception, they can detect their prey from miles away. Once they've honed in on a potential meal, they use their impressive speed and power to launch a surprise attack, often breaching out of the water to grab their victim. Despite their fearsome reputation, many people are drawn to these incredible animals, seeking out opportunities to witness them in their natural habitat. One such person was Heather Boswell, just 19 years old, working in the galley of a research ship that was exploring the depths of the ocean. Heather Boswell was living the dream, spending a six-month term with the U.S. National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration aboard the ship Discoverer. Her job might not have been the most glamorous, but it gave her a chance to be a part of something bigger, to witness the wonders of the sea firsthand. Little did she know that her journey would take a terrifying turn when a great white shark would come crashing into her life, changing it forever. March 23, 1994 was a seemingly ordinary day on the U.S. National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration research ship Discoverer as it cruised through the Pacific Ocean around 300 miles east of Easter Island. But little did the crew know that a terrifying encounter with one of the ocean's most fearsome creatures was about to take place. As nine members of the crew took a break from their duties to go for a refreshing open ocean swim, Three of their colleagues monitored them from a rigid inflatable boat, scanning the waters for any signs of danger. 
Meanwhile, another crew member kept a watchful eye from aboard the ship. The sun beat down on the calm turquoise waters as the crew frolicked in the waves, blissfully unaware of the danger lurking just beneath the surface. Most of the swimmers had been in the water for over an hour, with Heather Boswell having spent about 45 minutes enjoying the cool embrace of the ocean. It was then that disaster struck, in the form of a massive great white shark that suddenly appeared on the scene. At first, the crew thought it was all a joke when someone yelled out, shark, but as the enormity of the situation became apparent, panic set in, and fear spread through the swimmers like wildfire. Meanwhile on the boat, the monitor heard a second warning cry out across the water. I'm not kidding, there's a shark. The shark was now closing in on Heather Boswell, who was blissfully unaware of the danger that was lurking just 25 feet away from her. The crew on the boat watched in horror as the Great White approached Boswell, ready to strike at any moment. As the crew of the Discoverer scrambled to safety, Boswell found herself in a nightmare beyond her wildest imaginings. She had heard the second call for the shark, and she knew what was about to happen, but nothing could have prepared her for the horror that was about to unfold. The boat crew had picked up several swimmers and had watched in horror as the great white submerged and then resurfaced, grabbing Boswell by the ankle. Desperately, a member of the crew reached out with a stick, hoping to save her from the jaws of the predator, but it was too late. The shark had already clamped down on her leg, pulling her underwater and shaking her with ferocious force. Boswell later recalled that the shark was chewing on her leg tearing at her flesh with razor-sharp teeth. Despite the pain and terror, Boswell managed to fight her way to the surface, gasping for air as the shark continued to circle her. The boat crew reached out with a broom handle, hoping to pull her to safety, but the shark was not finished yet. In a split second, it struck again, grabbing her left leg and pulling her back underwater. Once again, the predator shook her with all its might, thrashing her back and forth like a rag doll. Finally, with incredible bravery and strength, Boswell managed to break free from the shark's grip and make it back to the surface. The boat crew grabbed her arms and tried to pull her to safety, but the shark refused to let go. In a game of tug-of-war between man and beast, the crew struggled to save Boswell's life. But it was too late. Boswell later said that she heard a sickening pop as the shark's jaws tightened around her leg, crushing bone and tearing flesh. It was a moment of heartbreak and horror that would stay with her for the rest of her life. The unimaginable horror didn't end there. Boswell desperately hoped that the popping sound she heard was just her leg dislocating, but when she looked down, her worst fear was realized. Her left leg was gone, bitten off by the monstrous great white shark. Meanwhile, a warning about a shark attack had been blared over the ship's PA system and chaos ensued. Amidst the commotion, a crew member cleaning his pistol heard the announcement and immediately rushed to the scene. As he arrived, he saw the shark swimming towards the crew member climbing a ladder and immediately fired several rounds in an attempt to save them. Miraculously, the shark veered away and swam around the stern of the ship. But the man didn't stop there. He followed the predator, unaware that all the crew members were already out of the water. He fired two more shots at the shark's head, killing it. The entire situation was nothing short of a heart-stopping thriller, with Boswell's struggle for survival and the crew's heroics culminating in a dramatic showdown with the killer shark. Meanwhile, Boswell, who had been in the inflatable boat monitoring the swimmers, was hoisted onto the ship. It was then that the true extent of her injuries became apparent. Many people mistakenly believe that once a person is out of the water, they are safe. However, the reality is that survival often depends on the actions taken after the attack. The shark attack had left Boswell with severe injuries. The medical team worked tirelessly to stabilize Boswell, who had lost a substantial amount of blood and was unresponsive. As they began preparing her for medical evacuation, her fragile state caused her blood pressure to drop to an alarming level, and the medical team had to perform CPR to keep her alive. The whole situation was heart-wrenching, and Boswell's condition was precarious, to say the least. But thanks to the quick thinking and dedication of the medical team and crew on the ship, Boswell slowly stabilized, and she was eventually transported to safety. 
The brave rescuers who risked their own lives to save Boswell were hailed as heroes and received well-deserved awards and recognition for their quick and decisive actions. Thanks to their heroic efforts, Boswell was able to receive the necessary medical treatment and was eventually flown to Seattle for further care. Heather Boswell's shark attack was a harrowing and traumatic experience that left her with life-changing injuries. However, the quick thinking and actions of the crew aboard the Discoverer and the medical team that treated her played a crucial role in saving her life. Their bravery and dedication to helping Boswell in her time of need cannot be overstated. Despite the physical and emotional scars that she undoubtedly carries, Boswell's survival and resilience are a testament to the human spirit and the power of hope in the face of adversity. Thank you for joining us as we remembered Boswell's survival and resilience. If you found this video informative and moving, we encourage you to like and subscribe to our channel for more content like this. See you in the next one. It was August 15, 2022, a beautiful sunny day, perfect for the beach. 55-year-old Karen Seitz and her family had traveled from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania to Myrtle Beach, South Carolina to spend an unforgettable vacation. They were all more than excited, especially Karen's grandchildren. The family had been planning this trip for over a year. Now, Karen and her husband were finally able to provide their grandchildren the perfect context to make some awesome memories. The kids were over the moon. Karen was too. She had always loved the beach ever since she was a child. There was nothing better than the gentle touch of the sun on her skin and nothing better than the sound of the waves. August 15th was only the family's second day in Myrtle Beach but they were already certain everything would be perfect during their stay. How could it not be when they were in one of the most iconic resort cities in the country? Located on the east coast of the United States in Horry County, South Carolina, Myrtle Beach is one of the major tourist centers in the states. Over 20 million tourists choose Myrtle Beach as their vacation destination each year. Maybe it's because of its subtropical climate, or maybe it's because of its miles and miles and miles of beaches. But the city is magnetic. The Grand Strand, an arc of beach land whose primary city is Myrtle Beach, has hundreds of hotels, thousands of restaurants, and tens of golf courses. Myrtle Beach is home to numerous events. It's a city that generally guarantees a good time, equal time relaxation, and more hectic activities. However, not everyone is lucky enough to engage with Myrtle Beach the way they were supposed to. That's what 55-year-old Karen Seitz found out on Monday, August 15, 2022. The day started out beautiful. The sun was up, the sky was blue, the waves of the Atlantic were singing. You know, the proverbial idyllic day at the beach. Karen Seitz and her husband were lying on the beach, carefully supervising their grandchildren. The kids were playing in the sand, happy and at peace. Around afternoon, Karen had an idea. She told her grandchildren they should get in the water, either for a swim or a fun splash. But once they got into the water, the kids' reaction surprised the 55-year-old grandmother. What if there are sharks? What if there are sharks? They kept asking. It was strange. Usually, Karen's grandchildren loved the water and never complained about a quick swim. Karen decided that despite the strangeness of the reaction, her grandchildren's worry was just a normal, childish fear. It was her duty as a grandmother to reassure them. Oh, don't be afraid. It's so rare that anybody ever gets bit by a shark, Karen told the kids. The woman then waited just a few feet away from Brian, her eight-year-old grandson. She was in waist-high water. The water felt nice until it suddenly didn't anymore, and Karen was left fearing for her life. It seemed like her grandchildren's words were more than a childish fear. In retrospect, their words were prophetic. In an instant, a creature jumped out of the water and latched its teeth on Karen's right arm. It was a shark, and a hungry one at that. At first, Karen felt a sharp pain, a pain unlike any other she'd ever felt before. 
In the first few seconds, the woman had no idea what kind of creature had attacked her. In fact, she thought it was anything but a shark. If she had to guess, she would have said it was a jellyfish currently attached to her arm. But when Karen Seiss looked down, she came face to face with the truth. Her attacker was indeed a shark. As soon as the woman realized what was happening, she acted. It had more to do with her strong survival instinct than with her giving much thought about the right way to proceed. The woman used her left arm to push the creature away, and shockingly, it worked. It was like the shark only wanted to get a small taste, though the bite was anything but small. Brian Seitz, Karen's eight-year-old grandson, watched in shock, only a couple of feet away. He had seen everything. The shark jumping out of the water, latching itself on Brian's grandma's arm, waving its tail and then finally letting go and falling down into the water. And as if that sight hadn't been scary enough, he was now faced with the sight of a bloody, terrified Karen. The woman and her grandchildren hurried toward the shore. Once they made it to the beach, they were surrounded by people. The racket was deafening. People were yelling, trying to warn others about the danger lurking beneath the waves. Others were still in the water, making their way toward the shore in an erratic manner. It was madness. Karen was still in shock once she got on the beach. She kept saying she didn't want to see her arm. She could feel the sharp pain and the blood trickling down her arm. Luckily, help was seconds away. An ER worker who happened to be at the beach heard the noise and rushed to help Karen, washing the woman's injured arm with bottled water. Minutes later, Karen Seitz was taken to the hospital where she underwent surgery. Hundreds of stitches later, Karen was ready to start her way toward recovery. She had suffered damage to her ring finger as well, but the surgery was a success. She was released from the hospital only a day after the attack. Despite this, doctors couldn't guarantee Karen's arm would ever be the same. The shark had actually somewhat damaged the woman's nerves and tendons as well. All things considered, though, the injuries could have been so much worse. Not to mention Karen's grandchildren could have been hurt too. And they were, in a sense. Eight-year-old Brian Seitz, who had witnessed the whole thing, was left traumatized by the attack and the possibility of losing his grandmother in front of his very eyes. But the sights didn't let the attack destroy their vacation. They decided to stay in Myrtle Beach for the week and try to enjoy the city's other attractions. They even visited the beach again, though Brian decided to stick to sunbathing and playing on the sand. I'll sit on the sand, but I ain't going in the water, the little boy told reporters. There was another shark attack on Monday, August 15th, only about half a mile away from where Karen was bitten. This time, the victim was luckier. The second attack was a more glancing bite to the leg, with no real repercussions. Four shark attacks were reported in South Carolina a year before, in 2021. Experts advise against swimming in the ocean at dawn or dusk when sharks approach the coast to feed to leave the water when schools of fish are seen close to the surf, and to avoid areas where people may be using bait to fish. Daniel Abel, a professor of marine science at Coastal Carolina University, said this after Karen Seitz's ordeal. It's very important that we treat our sharks, our ocean, and our entire planet with more respect than we do now. It was February 19, 2023, a Sunday, and Chris Davis was having a pleasant day in New Caledonia. Davis was 59 years old, but far from being anything but a strong, resilient man. In fact, Chris Davis was an experienced triathlete. Over the years, the man had represented his native Australia in age group world championship events several times. Triathletes are all about endurance, speed, and strength. They take part in competitions that require them to swim, cycle, and run. In a few words, they're tough. But Davis wasn't in New Caledonia to train for a competition. In fact, he was there for a far more simple, more pleasant reason, a vacation. New Caledonia isn't as popular as other dreamy destinations, say the Bahamas or Hawaii. But this doesn't mean the place is without its wonders. In fact, the opposite is true. 
New Caledonia is a collective of overseas France. Its inhabitants are French citizens who vote for the president of France. Despite this, the archipelago enjoys a quite significant autonomy. The dozens of islands that make up New Caledonia are located some 900 miles east off the coast of Australia, in the South Pacific. The place has increasingly become more and more popular with Aussie tourists. After all, it's just a three-hour flight from Sydney to Noumea, New Caledonia's capital city. After the flight, tourists are free to experience a one-of-a-kind place, one that combines the spirit of the French Riviera with the exotic beauties of the South Pacific. Like many other Aussies in the past few years, 59-year-old Chris Davis chose New Caledonia as his travel destination. He probably made an educated decision because the place is perfect for the more active travelers, such as past triathletes. Water sports are a big thing in New Caledonia, and so are diving, snorkeling, hiking, and horse riding. On February 19, 2023, Chris Davis was in Noumea, New Caledonia's capital, enjoying a day at the Chateau Royale Beach. Located just in front of the Chateau Royale Beach Hotel, this particular beach was bound to be popular. The day was beautiful, and the beach was more than crowded. People frolicked on the sand as well as in the sapphire blue water. None of them seemed to have a care in the world, and why would they? With the sun shining and the exotic views of New Caledonia, life seemed to be nothing short of perfect. In reality, there were plenty of reasons to be concerned, and all of them had to do with sharks. Sure, Australia is no stranger to sharks and other deadly creatures, and neither is the USA. In fact, New Caledonia ranks 13th in the world for the number of shark attacks. While this is still a precarious position, New Caledonia's waters are still generally considered pretty safe. But pretty safe is not the same as 100% safe. There had been many signs that all was not well in the South Pacific paradise. The Chateau Royale Beach had been the site of an almost deadly shark attack less than a month before, on January 29th. On that day, a 49-year-old woman named Bridget Du entered the water and was viciously attacked by a shark. The woman lost a hand, four fingers, and part of her leg in the attack, but she survived. Only days after, a foil surfer was also attacked by sharks, but the man managed to escape unscathed. Still on February 19, 2023, Chris Davis entered the water for a swim. Maybe he didn't know about the previous attacks, or maybe he thought he would be safe. After all, he wasn't the only one brave enough to venture in the water that day. There were many, many others. Children swam alongside their parents, the day was bright and full of joy, but that was about to change. Davis entered the waves and started swimming, some 450 feet away from the shore. He was no amateur. He had strength, endurance, and technique, all of them things that are generally required of triathletes. But these qualities weren't enough to save the man. Something happened. As the man was pulled beneath the waves, others looked in horror. Those still in the water scrambled toward the shore, toward safety. Those already on the beach watched in horror, petrified by the scene unfolding in front of their eyes. They could see the shark, and they could see the man thrashing as if he was struggling to get away from something. Children screamed, burying their heads in their parents' embrace. Soon enough, the water turned crimson, and then in a blink of an eye, it was all over. The man was left lying face down in the bloodied water, his limp body carried by the waves. Jet skiers rushed to help the man. When they reached him, it was clear Davis was no longer conscious. Still, they struggled to get Davis on a jet ski without causing him any further damage. His injuries were gruesome, too horrible to look at, but they needed to save him. Once Davis was safely taken to the sand, paramedics started their relentless effort to keep him alive. Unfortunately, it was too late. Over 40 minutes of CPR proved to be fruitless. Chris Davis was dead, horribly attacked by a shark. His injuries were simply too serious. According to paramedics, he was bitten three times on his right leg. 
He also suffered extensive injuries on both of his arms. Beaches in the area were immediately closed after the attack. Authorities knew they had to capture the shark and make sure it wouldn't attack anybody else. Sonia Lagarde, Numea's mayor, ordered sharks in the nearby waters to be culled. No one in the area was allowed to enter the water anymore. It was too dangerous. Meanwhile, while authorities were on the hunt for the animal, an autopsy revealed Chris Davis never stood a chance. According to the grim autopsy reports, any one of Davis's injuries was enough to kill him. Davis suffered an incredibly large bite to his thigh, extending 14 and a half inches from the hip to the knee, causing a deep lesion with the section of the femoral artery. This injury caused massive blood loss, which was enough to kill the man on its own. To top it off, Davis's other injuries were also deemed fatal. They were located on the man's upper limbs, the forearm, and the hands. Three days after the attack, New Caledonia authorities shared a picture of a huge 13-foot shark captured in the area where Davis was swimming at the time of the attack. The huge shark was immediately believed responsible for the attack. Its size and location fit the profile. The animal was killed shortly after being captured. Chris Davis's body was returned to Australia to his family. The man was survived by his wife and by his three adult sons. The family released a statement regarding Davis's tragic fate. The statement said, We are deeply mourning the loss of our beloved husband and father, Chris Davis. Chris was a senior software programming consultant in the superannuation and funds management industry and a keen triathlete, having represented Australia several times in age group world championship events. The family also took their time to thank New Caledonia authorities for their efforts in trying to save Davis's life. They expressed their sincere gratitude. It was January 5, 2023, and Manuel Lopez was in his boat, ready to dive into endless waters and search for axe tripes, a highly demanded type of mollusks. Lopez was in his 50s and a very experienced diver and fisherman. The man had been a fisherman for as long as he could remember. He relied heavily on fishing to make ends meet, but now his source of income was being threatened. The waters were more dangerous than usual. Sharks migrate to the area to feed in December and January. Mexican divers had been warned about the presence of sharks in the area for days. Many of them had spotted the creatures themselves. The area was teeming with sharks, all of them hungry and on the lookout for food. Because of this, most fishermen had been on high alert and had decided to wait the migration out, but not everybody afforded the luxury of preserving their own life. While the Mexican government offers a stipend of 7,200 pesos, roughly $400 per year, to supplement fishermen's income, the sum is not enough to make ends meet. Financial pressures meant Manuel Lopez had to make an extremely difficult choice. Keep diving or risk poverty. Lopez chose the former one, despite the huge dangers it implied. He knew that he had a chance of making some really good money. There was a shortage of seafood in the area, which in turn had created a great demand. The man needed to capitalize on this demand at a time when very few others would risk facing the sea. So on the morning of January 5, 2023, Lopez went out on his boat. He wanted to scuba dive in order to collect axe tripe, a mollusk like a scallop. These mollusks are usually at a depth of 36 to 59 feet. Pulling them out of the ocean floor can be quite risky. The turbulence can spark the interest of nearby sharks. But Manuel Lopez was willing to take this risk too. After all, he wasn't completely alone. Sure, he was the only one who planned to enter the water, but there were two tenders on board the boat. At about 11.30 that morning, Lopez dived deep beneath the surface of the water, never to return again. The Gulf of California, also known as the Sea of Cortez, separates the Baja California Peninsula from the Mexican mainland. It has a surface of 62,000 square miles, and maximum depths exceed 9,800 feet. In other words, there's plenty of room for all kinds of marine creatures to lurk, and some of them are far more dangerous than others. 
The Gulf's rich ecosystem is home to many, many animals. It also hosts a large number of migratory species, such as the humpback whales, the manta ray, the leatherback sea turtle, and, of course, sharks. Manuel Lopez was interested in only one of the numerous species that have their natural habitat in the Gulf of California. The man knew he'd find the precious axe tripes deep down, buried in the ocean floor. The two tenders, Lopez's co-workers, watched as the man dived deeper and deeper. Soon enough, he reached the ocean floor and started pulling axe stripes. And then something horrible happened. A terrifying huge shark emerged out of nowhere. The two tenders watched in shock as the huge creature opened its jaws and with a swift motion decapitated Manuel Lopez and bit both of his shoulders. It all happened so quickly, it was almost impossible. One moment, Lopez was there, looking for axe stripes and more than alive. The next, he was gone, torn to pieces by a terrifying creature. Horrified, the two tenders rushed toward the shore and alerted authorities. Lopez's death was instantaneous, which brought them some kind of solace, but the trauma was still huge. Theories about how and why the attack happened started pouring in almost immediately. Everyone had an opinion, from fishermen to marine experts. Some scientists came forward and suggested the attack could have been prevented. According to them, it was all about the diving suit. Mexican authorities had previously advised divers to wear brightly colored wetsuits in order to stand out from seals. Because of the migration, pregnant female sharks often enter the Gulf's waters looking for fatty seals, which are often the preferred prey of hungry sharks. Some experts suggested the shark responsible for the attack might have mistaken Manuel Lopez for a seal because the man's suit was black. Other experts were unconvinced by these claims, stating that this kind of theory is hard to prove. Why? Because most wetsuits are black, or dark blue anyway, and there's no way to tell statistically whether they are the common denominator in shark attacks. However, many scientists agree the diver's fishing activity was most likely the cause of the attack. According to Chris Lowe, the director of the Shark Lab at California State University, Long Beach, the smell of the shellfish concentrated around the diver could have lured the shark to the area. This might have happened because sharks have extraordinarily developed olfactory senses, hence one of their nicknames, swimming noses. Sharks can easily detect smells in the water. To top it off, they can feel the vibrations caused by struggling animals. But there are other theories that might be true. The man's position on the ocean floor could have made him look like a foraging sea lion, which are also a favorite prey to sharks. There were other mysteries concerning the attack. Why did the shark bite the man's head and shoulders? Sharks usually go for the limbs. Once again, experts suggested Lopez's position on the seafloor might have provoked the unusual manner of the attack. Because the man was essentially walking along the bottom, the shark couldn't have approached him from underneath. Approaching prey from the side would have most likely exposed the shark to a counterattack, so biting the man's head was probably the shark's only viable option. Or maybe the creature went for the head for another, far simpler reason. Maybe the shark deliberately went for the head, intent on quickly incapacitating its victim. Despite all the theories, scientists argued that knowing the whole truth and the animal's reasoning was highly unlikely. Sadly, these attacks can happen, but there are safety measures that can potentially save a life. According to National Geographic, most shark attacks aren't fatal. Because they are curious by nature, sharks often bite humans just to figure out what they are. After these so-called sample bites, sharks usually release humans. These fierce animals don't have great eyesight, so they sometimes mistake humans for other mammals. That's when fatal attacks most likely occur. There are some safety measures you can take in order to avoid a shark attack. Avoid swimming at dusk or dawn, since this is feeding time for sharks, and also their eyesight is even worse than usual. Avoid estuaries, since the murky waters can provide a perfect hiding point for sharks. Avoid areas with fishing, because the smells and the vibrations can and will attract sharks. Don't wear shiny objects while swimming, 
because sharks can mistake shiny jewelry for fish. Don't panic if you encounter a shark and maintain eye contact.